Before there was Elf on a shelf, there were Christmas monsters to get kids to behave. For example, Krampus. Krampus is probably one of the strongest incentives to get kids to behave. I mean, I would. And the creepy thing is, Krampus is not alone. He is just one of hundreds of Christmas monsters. Yes, hundreds. And in fact, Krampus is pretty tame compared to other monsters. I mean, sure, he's got the long tongue, he has the birch sticks and the sack, and takes naughty children down to hell. There are parades in his honor for Krampus knocked and people dress up as Krampus and terrorize all the children. It's a wonderful way to kick off the holidays. But like I said, there are Christmas monsters worse than him out there. And there are deities that are worse than Krampus. Let's talk about my favorite creepy Christmas lore, Frau Perchta, the Christmas witch. Think of her as the Michael Myers or the Jason Voorhees of Christmas. I actually covered her in one of my first videos, and the link is below, and she became so popular that I wanted to visit her once more. Hello my spookies and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name is Alex and I want to wish you happy holidays. If you love spooky stuff no matter what time of year it is, then this video is for you. And welcome to a new series that I am doing just for December, Scary Christmas Ghost Stories and Scary Christmas Monsters. You could say I'm reimagining an old Victorian tradition of telling scary stories during the holidays. Before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and click on that notification bell so you'll be the first to know when I upload a new video. And you can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, at The Spooky Stuff. I post daily paranormal content for your entertainment and education. Finally, if you want more spooky stories and ghost hunting resources, then be sure to visit my website at thespookystuff.com. All right, let's begin. The holidays are a special time of year. It's a time when families come together, they exchange gifts, the Christmas lights are up, it's starting to get cold, snow starts falling, depending on where you live, and we all start getting cozy in our blankets and start drinking hot cocoa. We have Christmas cookies and just yuletide joy. And parents Parents put up Elf on a Shelf as an incentive to get their kids to behave. I mean, if we want to talk about haunted dolls, I mean, Elf on a Shelf. I mean, this little thing is re apparently reporting back to Santa on whether these kids are naughty or nice. That's a whole other topic for another time, though. But seriously, we put energy in Elf on a Shelf. Sometimes I wonder, do spooky things happen with Elf on a Shelf? But before we have our beloved Elf on a Shelf, we had Christmas monsters like Krampus. And European traditions are filled with Yuletide monsters. It's like a way of life. And of course, we have more than one scary Christmas monster. I mean, there's Grilla, there's the Calaconzaros. There's so many out there. And like I said before, my personal favorite is Frau Perchta, the Christmas witch. And compared to her, Krampus is pretty tame. Dare I say vanilla. I mean, yeah, Krampus is there to scare you and everything. You know, Krampus is good for jump scares, but Frau Perchta is a whole other category. I wouldn't want to cross Frau Perchta. No, thank you. And Frau Perchta comes from lore in Eastern Europe, Austria, and other German lore. First, let's talk about what does she look like? Well, it depends if you've been good or naughty this year. If you were good, she appears as a beautiful maiden in white robes. And according to Jacob Grimm, Frau Perchta is based on the goddess Frau Berchta, who is the goddess of spinning and weaving. Also, also, she is believed to be the feminine version of Birchtold, who is the sometimes leader of the Wild Hunt. And she also has origins with Frigga, the list goes on, even La Belfana. Now, let's talk about if you were bad. If you were bad, Frau Perchta appears to you as an elderly, haggard woman. Like, we're talking witch from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, if not scarier. Also, whether she's a beautiful maiden or a haggard old woman, she has one foot that's larger than the other. And depending on the lore you read, Sometimes that foot is a swan's foot or it's even a goose foot. Either way, the larger misshapen foot indicates that she has shape-shifting powers. And Frau Perchta generally stayed in Alpine lore, and then the Grimm brothers were the ones who thrusted her into the spotlight. And I get more into that in my first video about Frau Perchta. Be sure to check the description for the link to that video. So now we know just how terrifying Frau Perchta can look. How do you stay on her nice side? 
and what gets you on her naughty list. Frau Perchta is the upholder of cultural taboos. So Frau Perchta believes that you need to have your spinning or your weaving done by the 12 days of Christmas. And then during the 12 days of Christmas, which goes from December 25th to January 5th, Frau Perchta roams the countryside and she goes into your home. You can't stop her. And once she goes into your house, she knows immediately if you've been naughty or nice. She will know if you were spinning during the 12 days of Christmas, and she will also know if you've adhered to her traditional feast of fish and gruel. Yum. If you were nice, you would probably get a nice coin, and if you caught a glimpse of Frau Perchta, then you probably would see her as a beautiful maiden in white robes. If you were naughty, there was hell to pay. So what happens if you've been naughty? Well, while you're sleeping soundly in your bed, Frau Perchta creeps up to you. She slits open your torso. She removes your stomach and your intestines, and then she stuffs you with straw and garbage. It's truly terrifying. So finish your spinning by the 12 days of Christmas, eat your fish and gruel, and be nice throughout the year. There was an actual cult dedicated to Frau Perchta, but don't worry, they don't do what Frau Perchta does. They were actually pretty harmless. They would leave food and drinks to Frau Perchta in exchange for wealth and abundance. You know, provide sustenance to Frau Perchta during her 12 days of murderous rampage. And then in 1468, the cult of Frau Perchta was condemned by the church. Big shock. In Austria, her followers are known as Perchten, and they would wear animal masks to different parades and festivals. And in other parts of Europe, men would wear ugly Perchten masks, and they would have fangs, tusks, and horse tails, and they would go into people's homes to drive out ghosts, demons, and bad spirits away. Which makes me wonder, wouldn't Frau Perchta be included with that? So Frau Perchta played a significant role during the holidays in Europe. So. Which one do you think is worse, Krampus or Frau Perchta? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notifications. And also share it with your family and friends. Get them into the Christmas spirit. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next round.